Hello everyone and welcome back. So today is going to be a 45 minute uh, hip sequence. So we're going to start with a few sun salutations just to get the body warmed up. And if you're not familiar with sun salutations, so in Sanskrit they're called Surya Namaskar. Surya is the Sanskrit word for the sun. Okay, So the sun salutation warms up the body and then because of this you end up feeling more limber and then we can work on the hips more. If you think about the hips, so when I think about the hips I'm thinking about this whole entire region of the body. Okay, And as you can obviously tell it's quite thick. Even on a really thin person there is a lot of mass in this spot of the body. Okay, So that means you might need to be really patient as you work on these postures. This is an open level class so meaning that I'm probably going to instruct a few different variations and you have to be um, skilled in how you select which posture. Okay, So just because I can do really deep variations doesn't mean I need to do them every single time and in fact sometimes it might actually be exactly the least appropriate posture to work on. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be different variations and I will likely explain which ones are a little bit more uh, important to select the proper variation, meaning you could, might be able to hurt yourself. Okay, So if you need to pause the video to kind of set up your space, please go for it. And then we're going to start from standing at the top of the mat, starting with a few sun citations. Surya Namaskar. You either practice in mountain pose or samastitihi, equal standing pose. And you can spread your toes. And then place a little bit of your balance into the back of the body, almost like you're about to fall over backwards, but not quite so far, okay? So you don't want to be leaning forward like this. Lean slightly back, and actually what will happen is that your whole body starts to line straight up and down. Take a full breath in. A full breath out. Take a deeper breath in. A deeper, fuller breath all the way out. And I do the same thing, but only a little bit more slowly. As you inhale, arms reach up. As you exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees if you need to. Get your head towards your legs. Half lift, inhale, head up. And then plant your hands, fingers spread wide, step back, plank pose, flat body. As you exhale, lower elbows are bending, upward facing dog, inhale if you need to, do cobra. Downward facing dog, exhale, look to your hands, they should line up symmetrically, fingers spread wide. And then look back towards your feet, feet line up symmetrically with the hand. You might need to pedal the heels. And it helps wake up the sole, the foot, the ankle, the calf. Take one more inhale. Exhale. Head comes up, step straight into the half lift. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold, curl in tighter. Try and get your head even marginally closer to your legs. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, and start center. Same thing. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, step back, plank. Lower down with control, with strength. Upward facing dog, inhale. Puff your chest open, roll your shoulders back. And downward facing dog, exhale, hands symmetrical, fingers spread, feet symmetrical, toes spread. Try and ground your heels down, and now gazing to the space, anywhere between your legs. Now you're not going to look only at a physical place. The eyes physically are looking between the legs, but the mind's eye is subtly looking at the rhythm of your breath. If there's no rhythm to your breathing, that's one of your responsibilities as a practitioner. Bring a rhythm to the breathing. One more inhale. 
So, head comes up. Step or hop. If you're going to hop, land as silent as you can. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Moving on, so now it's kind of like a sun citation, but this is more like a dharma, dharma yoga sun citation. Dharma yoga is just a different style of yoga. As you inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Right leg back, onto your right knee, in a lunging stance. Switch to the top of the foot, inhale, arms reach. Look up. Exhale, plant your hands, toes tuck, plank lower. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Full breath in. Full breath out. Head comes up, right foot steps onto the left knee. Top of the left foot, press down, inhale, arms reach, look up. Exhale, plant your hands, tuck your toes, plank, lower, up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale, full breath in, full breath out, head comes up, step or hop, half lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands start center. Left foot steps. You can do it however you like to face your screen, whether it's a phone, tablet, computer, TV. I'm just doing it this way so that you guys have the best view of the posture. Whenever you're working on hips, it's important not to think only of flexibility. When I work on hips, I'm thinking about how do I warm up this muscular area. How do I get slowly into those muscles, but also into the joint? Because you want the joint to move and glide in its space properly. So this is the best way I would recommend to do it. Before you do the deeper postures, you start with poses that don't necessarily even really seem like they're necessarily working on flexibility, because they actually seem like strength postures. Reach the arms, inhale. And then starting to the left, turn, warrior A. The stance is lunging low, the back foot stays flat on the floor. Ideally, knee straight, arms reach, inhale. You're trying to lunge down as you reach up and open. Take about three deep breaths. One more inhale. Exhale. Open up, inhale. And then swap to the right. Same stance. When you do warrior A, the torso, especially the pelvis and the shoulders, are square, straight forward. So I'm not at all to the side. That's more like warrior B. Warrior A, square to the front, arms reach, inhale. You lunge, low down. Two more breaths. One more inhale. Exhale. Breathe in, peel open. Start with triangle. We're gonna keep going to the right side. Torso should be lined up straight, arms lined up straight going out to the sides. As you exhale, you reach way forward and then down. You could do any variation of triangle that you're comfortable with. And now try and focus on getting into the back side of the right leg, deep into the hip joint on the right side, and then opening through the left side of the outer hip and thigh, pelvis. One more inhale. Exhale. Breathe in, come up. Keep the T-shape. 
Swap the stance through the middle to the left. Triangle, second side. Exhale, reach. Repeat the same variation you did last time. So first time I caught my right big toe. So of course, this time I'm catching second, left big toe. One more inhale. Exhale. Breathe in, you come up. Through the middle. And now this time the stance is slightly longer, wider. Warrior B to the right. Torso still square, straight up to the side. And now you're lunging down as the, stank, the stance lengthens out. And then from here, when you look here, it's almost like you're a piece of bread going down into a toaster, okay? And then only from there, you turn your head, you're looking to your right. Now try and keep this flat quality as you bring it down. Let's take a few more breaths. Go lower, one more inhale. Exhale, side angle pose, right hand touches down. If you need to, you could do the easier variation up on your elbow. Left arm inhale, pointing forward. Press your shoulder and knee together. So it's going to be right side, shoulder, right side, knee. They hold in together. One more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, you come all the way up, like into warrior B. And then you straighten, move through the middle, second side, start to lunge, like a piece of bread, going down into a toaster, just down. You keep the stance flattened through here. As you reach wide, crown of the head up, pelvis sinks down, and then, and only then, when you maintain all of that, you turn your head, gazing to the left. One more, inhale. Exhale, side angle pose. Right arm, inhale, reach. Shoulder and knee press together as you lengthen through the side, focusing on getting deep, especially into the left hip, and then inner right thigh. Two more breaths. One more inhale. Exhale. Come up, breathe in. And then from here, back to a neutral standing posture. Tree pose. So you could do this posture. If you really need to, then you just simply focus just on the balance, okay? You can consider this almost like a resting pose. Otherwise, right foot. This is Realistically, the first variation, bringing the heel all the way up to the groin, all the way, okay? And then when you stand like this, so you don't want the knee to drift forward, okay? I, I don't want to say this is incorrect. You're just not going in the right direction. The knee needs to go back. So again, you have this flattened quality, okay? So from a different angle, not really correct. Knee is drifting forward. More correct alignment is now the knee is in line with the body, and you stand, okay? Otherwise, you can work on lotus. Right foot into lotus. And now you stay. Some of us might need to actually hold the lotus. Before lotus opens up enough, before that, it always feels like it's slipping out, okay? So if you're kind of in this position where you can do lotus, but you feel like it's always trying to leave the posture, so just simply hold a little bit, okay? And then you can do the posture like this.
Take one more inhale. Exhale. Start to release. Second side. I'm going to go straight into Lotus because that's what I was doing on the other side. By the way, this is also appropriate. You can do Lotus like this. This is a preliminary. Technically speaking, this is already perfectly Lotus pose. It just might be that you don't have the mobility yet to move on to the next step, which is like this. Basically, the foot starts to go into the heel of, not the heel, rather the um, seam of the inner groin. And then when your foot can stay in that spot, then you can just stay. Otherwise, maybe you need to hold it. And you simply balance. Make your body engaged, okay? So you're not wilted. The body is energetic. Here's a little secret about these postures. If you repeat them often enough, for a long enough period of time, then there becomes this spacious quality to the pose. Not so much just my joint is spacious, not tight. It's more so that your heart and your mind are resting in this spacious, peaceful okay? So when you get into the pose, see if you can create a little bit of calm, a little bit of quiet, and then just simply stay in that space. And let your heart and your mind recharge in that space. This is why yoga is so peaceful. From here, it's time to release. But that's something to work on in every pose. Ideally, if you could, you set up the alignment, and then you start to create this calm, quiet, insightful space. And then you just rest in that place, and you recharge. Next pose. The feet go wide, wide-legged stance. Hands are at the waist. Inhale. The ball of the foot, the big toe pressing down. As you exhale, the legs stay active as I start to fold down. Dig the ball of the foot into the floor, okay? Especially the inner edge of the foot presses in strong. Plant your hand, half lift inhale. And as you exhale, the legs, they just simply keep doing the same thing. In a way, they don't even actually stop doing what they're doing. Now the torso gets a different job. It's trying to basically hinge all the way down. So the feet keep pressing down. You're almost trying to spread your hips open at the back as you slot the torso straight down between the legs. Try and touch your head onto the floor. You could do any variation you like with the hands. You could press the floor. You can catch your big toes, you can hold your heels, you can reach behind you. I don't really care which one you do. Do the one that makes you feel the most connected with your body. We're going to hold this pose for just a few more breaths. Once your head can touch down fairly easily, press your head down, almost like you're trying to come up into a headstand. Okay. Obviously, your feet should not start to leave the floor. One more inhale. Exhale. Plant the hands, half lift in hand. We're going to go to the left. Turn to the left into a lunging style posture. High lunge. So the knee is off the floor. Only briefly inhale, reach the arms up. If you do hands apart, try and lunge way lower. This is a really important posture to work on. If you want your yoga practice to improve, do more lunges. One more inhale. Exhale, the knee touches down. You're on the top of the foot. The top of the foot should press down firmly the whole duration of the pose. You can press your knee, try and open the belly. The ribs, the chest flares open. And the whole time you're pressing down. And if you know how, you should tuck your tailbone. So the tailbone is in the end of your pelvis. It's actually the end of your spine. And it points like this. 
basically like what my finger is doing. And then you keep trying to tilt it this way. The tailbone has a technical name. It's called the coccyx. So if you want to Google it, tailbone or coccyx, and then maybe it'll make some more sense to you. From here, a variation. Here's a few. Okay, so one of them, you just stay and you work on this because it might already be challenging enough. Another one, you can reach up and maybe even back. Okay, and then last one, you can try and catch your foot. Or you catch your foot and you start to bring your heel towards your bum. Whatever variation you're gonna do, start now holding for five breaths. This is the one I'm gonna hold. It looks like this. Create that space of calm and quiet. And now simply breathe and be in that space. One more inhale. Exhale, release, plant your hands, lift your knee, moving through the middle to the right, starting with the high lunge. Set up your stance, find some strength and stability as you inhale, arms reach up, and now start to sink into your posture, taking about three or four deep breaths. Try and keep your knees straight as you lunge low. One more inhale. And exhale. Let your knee touch down. Hands press to the knee. Top of the foot presses down. The back leg, so this time it should be the left leg that's behind you, should be one straight line. Just like the edge of my mat is one straight line, not at all squiggly, okay? Same thing with the leg. It goes right behind you, straight line. Foot presses down. Take a few breaths before we move into the deeper variation. Try and open your belly. You can really do this by tucking the tailbone. It helps to create a sensation of stability in the pelvis and the spine, the low back especially. And then from there, a lot of postures start to open up. One variation, you stay. Another variation, you reach and back bend. And then the third variation, which I was doing last time, so I'm going to repeat. You reach, catch. You can do the pose like this. But ideally, if you can, you bring the heel in. This is obviously much harder. Five breaths, starting now. Get into your pose. Do your best to regulate your breathing. Steady, rhythmic, inhale and exhale through the nose. <sighs> find some peace. And if you can't find it, here's a secret. Learn how to get skillful at creating it. One more inhale. Exhale. Release. Toes tuck, step back, plank. Lower down, exhale. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. From here, just for a moment, the toes stay tucked. You can leave your hands down. That makes the pose a lot easier. Otherwise, you sit right on your heels, hands start center. 10 breaths, I'm not gonna say anything. Get in your pose. Together, we'll do 10 breaths in silence, okay? Close your eyes. Bring all of your attention within the body. Make sure that you're experiencing the same amount of weight on both sides of the body, especially the toes. So it shouldn't be one side, one foot does all of the work while the other one gets to be lazy. 50-50, left and right. Sit straight up. And then 
and just simply be present. Whatever experiencing, whatever experience you're having of the posture, maybe that's soreness, tightness, some discomfort, some pleasure, irritability, peacefulness, whatever is there, see if you can just simply be present, okay? Last couple breaths. One more inhale. Exhale. From here, your knees stay together. Ideally, you split the heels and sit between them. You might need to put a block or a pillow or a rolled up pillow or a rolled up towel or blanket underneath your hips. If you can't sit between your heels, which I do want to point out, Maybe five years ago, I don't know if I could sit between my heels like this. Ten years ago, definitely couldn't sit between my heels like this. So if you need to, you can sit with the heels together onto the heels, okay? Here's another thing. This might not be for most of us, but for some of us, you can just simply cross your legs and sit like this. Totally different pose, but it might simply be too painful for the knees, maybe even the ankles. Otherwise, you can sit on your heels, commonly called hero pose or you can sit right between your heels. And this is, I would say, the variation I wish that we can all work on, okay? Otherwise, you work on some different, maybe preliminary stage of the pose. Same idea. You sit down, sit straight. So that means the spine is totally upright. You can say the quality of the spine here should be erect, okay? And then the chest, the chest should not be caved in. Especially if you think about it, when the chest caves in, the spine is no longer in that upright, tall quality. So the pose should look like this. Okay? And from here, you can place your hands on your knees. Now try and maintain that upright quality. If you can, you could do Jalandhara Bandha, or chin lock, where the chin comes down to the sternum. And then the throat basically gets concealed within. And this is actually good for stimulating of this area, which we don't think about very often. First of all, we have our throat chakra right here. But then also, beyond just the concept of chakras, we have um, some major gland organs here. Okay? And you can stimulate them. The thyroid, for example, by doing this posture. This is called Jalandhara Bandha, chin lock to the sternum. You can simply tilt your head down. If the chin does not touch right away, then so be it. This is something to know about yoga practice. You might need to take many, many steps to get to the place that you are trying to get to. So the chin doesn't touch today, that's okay. Keep practicing these videos, keep practicing in general, and then over time, you'll get there. Let's do about five more breaths. If this is starting to irritate your knees, that's okay. So maybe you release the pose and you wait for the next one. Close your eyes. Finish up these last few breaths. Bring the breath into the body slowly. Expel the breath out of the body slowly. Give it this smooth, graceful quality so that there is some semblance of skill and attentiveness, okay? It's not mindless breath. Conscious, skillful breathing. Last breath. By the way, so I kind of this had slipped my mind, but the next time, if you're gonna do this video, and by the way, I recommend this, I would say, this is something that is quite important. It's entirely up to you, but what I would say is do these videos often. So let's just say you really didn't like this hip video. Okay, so then don't do this one. But let's just say you did really like this one and you liked a couple of other ones. Do them more often. So this is kind of interesting. In our culture, we're taught to kind of almost always upgrade to something new. But what I've learned, especially this is applicable to yoga practice, is if you take one thing and then you repeat it many, 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 many times, 
that's how you create mastery over that thing. So let's just say it's this pose and it really sucks for you. Do it a thousand times, I guarantee you, you're gonna start to become extremely skillful, dare I say, masterful, okay? So the next time you do this pose, you can start to recline. If you can sit between your heels and it doesn't hurt, you start to go down and then maybe you could be on your forearms and then eventually you go all the way flat down, okay? So that's just simply called reclined hero pose or supta virasana. Supta means recline. Vira is hero. Asana means posture. By now, probably our knees need a little bit of rest. So you simply extend the legs so that we can practice Paschimottanasana, forward folds. The legs are straight. Catch your big toes. The feet stay pressing out like this, okay? So they're not like all soft and doing whatever. They press firmly, yet there's this calm quality, okay? Catch the big toes, inhale, sit up. And as you exhale, don't try too hard, just start to fold. The quality of the arms should be like this, okay? It's almost like I'm rowing a boat, okay? So when you catch the big toes, you're pulling back. And if you just notice right now, my bicep is not doing anything. As soon as I start to pull, I don't really have very big muscles, but it clearly engages, okay? Nothing, and then it's pulling and engaging. But ultimately, you're trying to include all of these muscles on your back because you're doing this action. Take one more inhale. Exhale. Breathe in, head up. Same pose, but a deeper variation. So maybe you can catch the heels, your wrists, or maybe you just repeat the same exact way that you did it. Inhale, head up. Exhale, fold. Five breaths. Try and make your way deeper into the posture. Try and breathe slower. Compose your breathing. There's no need to rush. One more inhale. Exhale. Head up and in. Exhale, release. From here, I believe this is kind of our last sequence that we're going to practice here. So the pose that we're going to do is first Janu Shashasana. Left heel comes all the way to the groin. This is very similar to the stance that's created when you do tree pose, okay? So it's this L shape that you create. My right leg right now is the tall, long part of the L, the up and down part. And then my left leg with the knee bent creates the part that goes on the bottom, okay? So it should be an L shape or a 90 degree angle. And then from here, you can reach forward and catch. Inhale, head up. Exhale, fold. Try to get a little bit deeper into the pose and likely you will experience some discomfort. This pursuit of going deeper in the pose brings in more sensation for your nerves to experience, okay? Don't rush to go deeper, but try and maybe be curious, half an inch, maybe even a millimeter, half a millimeter, to go in a little bit deeper. And the reason I bring this up is that the hips will the hips push you out of the pose. And that's okay, you don't have to go very deep. But we're nearing the end of the class, this is our best opportunity. We're the most limbered up. This is kind of where the class is going, to this point where we can finally go a little bit deeper than maybe yesterday, a little bit deeper than before. One more inhale with this. Exhale, inhale, head up, exhale, release. You take the shape and now we just simply alter it. The left knee comes up and now you take your left foot and you bring it across to the right side of your right leg, okay? Some of us stay like this, some of us, so I'm gonna point this out. This is the easiest variation to this pose, by far the easiest. You just simply sit like this, okay? What I'd really recommend is you take this whole foot across 
and then you stack the knees, okay? If you're a guy, it's very likely that you're gonna have to move your junk out of the way, okay? This is just the reality of this pose. It's a little bit easier for a woman. The knees stack, and then maybe you could do the two sides of this pose. So this is called Gomukasana, or uh, shoelace pose, okay? And the reason why it's called shoelace, you can kind of think of the knees as a knot. What do you do with a shoelace? The first thing you do is you take both ends, and then you cross them, and you make one tie, okay? So there's no bow to this pose, but the legs cross over like a shoelace. So if you need to see that again, I'll do it really quickly. We came from this half butterfly position. You take the leg across, and then you get the knees to stack like this, okay? And then if you can, you could do the full version, okay? So there's half and then there's full. This is the full version. And now you just simply sit, okay? So we're gonna do that pose again. And now we're gonna stay. If it hurts to do the full version, both legs, so it's only the left leg then, you're doing half variation, okay? And if you need to see that again, you just simply reverse and watch the posture again. From here, you just simply sit straight. And if you really wanna get deeper, you're trying to get the knees to be more stacked. This is a really nice pose to stay in. Okay, so we have just enough time to work on these last couple postures. So just sit straight and tall and try and get your bum to be even on the floor. If your bum is not even on the floor, that's okay. So I often use the word try because that's just somehow, sometimes that's just how the posture works. You try and do the correct alignment and then maybe you're a little bit too tight, it doesn't work out. So just try and do your best. And that means also you keep this in your mind. So this quality of the bum being flat on the floor, let's just say it doesn't happen instantly at the beginning of the pose. So you keep in mind that throughout the duration of the posture, you're trying to get all the way down flat to the floor. And now maybe, now that you're there, you just simply stay. Let's take another 10 breaths quietly to ourselves. Remember, the quality of the breath should be going through the nose, slowly on the inhale, slowly on the exhale. And you have this overall awareness of the capacity of your lungs, okay? So when I'm inhaling, I'm aware and attentive. Is this really a full quality breath? And of course the exhale comes around and that's an emptying quality. So I'm aware, is there really any more breath I could breathe out or am I done, okay? approximately 10 breaths. Sit straight. And now just embody that calm, silent space. And if it's not really there, work on creating it. Make sure the hands are not fidgeting. If you want, hands heart center. I'm doing hands on the knees. And now you just simply relax into this space that you're creating. And if it's kind of intense for you to sit like this, as long as it's not hurting you, the intensity is likely okay. If the intensity is so high, it's like it's prodding you, you hate it. Adjust the pose, don't make it so intense, okay? It's impossible to be calm and peaceful when you're hurting yourself simultaneously. Just think about it. Ah, this hurts so much, I'm so calm. Said nobody ever. <laughs> Let's do about two more breaths. If you really like, so just for the sake of this 45 minute class, we can't hold this pose too long. But this is a really good posture, especially if you have no injuries and you're a little bit more um, proficient at yoga practice. I would actually recommend you pause the video and then you hold this pose for at least two more minutes. And then maybe if you've do, done plenty of yoga, plenty of yin yoga, then hold this pose for another three or four minutes. So that way you're holding it for maybe a total of five. 
otherwise we're going to release. The easiest way to release is to start simply leaning back, okay? And it's very likely that for a lot of you, the knee joints or the hip joints will feel kind of tender and tired. And this is quite usual. I don't want to say it's a good thing per se, but it's not a bad thing. You just need to treat your body with respect as you're getting into the pose and out of the pose. And all, sometimes all that you really got to do is just gently let the knee move a little bit, okay? If you feel no pain, no stiffness in your knee after that pose, that's amazing. I'm really happy for you. But that might not be the case for everyone. So if you feel that tenderness in your joints, just let the body go back to its neutral. This is because of the fascia in the body, okay? That sensation. Second side. This time it's my right leg into half butterfly pose, okay? I'm just simply switching my orientation to the other direction so that again, you have a view of this side of the posture. You don't have to change sides, okay? As long as you're doing now, the right leg is folded. Janu Shashasana, inhale, and exhale, folds. So I'm quite flexible. This posture doesn't really do it for me in terms of feeling like I'm doing this really deep, challenging pose. But not every posture in yoga needs to be this extremely arduous ordeal, okay? Does that make sense? So this is actually a really simple posture for me personally, and it's just as valuable if someone else is really tight, or maybe someone else is really not tight, they're very open. It's still a good posture. So I want you to understand that it doesn't have to be this deep, flexible pose every single time, okay? This is a very basic principle, fundamental posture, and yet, it's extremely healing and useful. So see if you can get deeper into the body, and that might just mean deeper awareness, deeper perception. Let's finish up these last two breaths. So last time, I feel like I might have explained it slightly confusing, so I'm going to break it down a little bit more technically for you, okay? This is variation one. This is by far the easiest, okay? This is like if you've injured your knee. You simply sit like this. Already, you're starting to open through the IT band, the thigh, and then especially into the hips. But this is quite gentle, so if you are even remotely uh, more flexible, this might not really do it for you. But if you're injured, this is variation one. Variation two, you just simply continue the same aspect of the pose, but now you're able to get into half gomukhasana or half shoelace pose. Okay, so now the knees are stacked. And then the full variation, you take the bottom leg and you add it into the posture. And that's what takes it from half to full gomukhasana. Okay, so now we're in full gomukhasana. I'm gonna practice it from this position. But if you feel pain in your knees, please don't do the posture that is actually harming you. It completely bypasses one of the main principles of yoga practice, which is ahimsa. Ahimsa is a Sanskrit word that basically, roughly speaking, translates to non-harming, meaning you can't harm either animals, yourself, other people, the planet, okay? So this is actually, if you really want to become this amazing yogi. Don't worry about Lululemon or flexibility. You should think more about ahimsa for starters. Non-harming. Are my words, my actions, are they harmful? And you can think about that and apply that to so many aspects of your life. But here we're doing the asana practice, the postural practice. So you can think to yourself, am I practicing ahimsa when I'm doing these poses? Okay. Am I harming myself or am I healing myself? So for me, this is the appropriate variation. Knees are stacked, hips are even on the floor, and now I stay. We're gonna finish our practice with this posture, okay? So set up your pose, sit straight, make sure you don't have this wilted, 
quality to the posture. Instead, it's perked up. And now you just simply stay. And you could practice Jalandhara Bandha again, which is the chin lock. So the Jalandhara Bandha, I already mentioned the physical benefits of stimulating, for example, the thyroid gland right here. But also on a more energetic level, this is called a seal or a lock. So when you tuck the chin down like this, this seals the prana, the energy of the breath, or the energy inherent in the body within this space, okay? Kind of the same way that you use a lid on a water bottle to seal the water within the bottle, okay? This is a little bit more, dare I say, esoteric or mystical. Some things in yoga don't make sense right away. It takes some time to practice it, and then over time, you have these little epiphanies. Ah, okay, now I understand why that's important. Okay, so sometimes you have to practice things for a while before they make sense to you. So maybe just work on the quality of the chin lock, the chin to the sternum, as you sit straight and you breathe. And if you're new to this practice, you're probably going to notice it's kind of tiring. It's kind of draining. It's not easy. Okay. So this is means you have some work to do. Okay. So we have about five more breaths together, give or take. And then we're going to go straight into Shavasana. You should do this with your eyes closed. You can bring awareness to the tips where the rings of the nostrils are. And you feel the breath as it comes into the body. And it almost fills everything, just like water goes into a cup and fills the whole entire space. And then the exhale is exactly the opposite. You can feel as the air starts to remove itself from the body, okay? And then you consciously are expelling the breath. Okay, and this really changes the perspective that you have of breathing from this unconscious thing that happens all day long, every day, every day of your life, and you change it to this beautiful experience of being present as the life force comes in and out of your body. This is imperative if you want to create that calm, quiet quality within where you can just simply reside in that peace. Okay? It's time to release the pose, and if you paused the video last time to hold the posture for longer, I'd recommend you do that. In fact, it's appropriate for almost all postures. You can hold them longer. Even the hardest poses, over time, you might start to practice them for longer holds, okay? And it changes your perspective on the pose. It's actually not that hard to do a pose for a couple seconds. Is significantly challenging even to do easy postures for five minutes okay so if you were holding it as a yin pose last time do the same duration on this side okay and then to release you simply lean back and then you let the legs extend from here I'm gonna end the class but what I'd recommend is that you maybe get a blanket or an eye pillow you can even use just a cloth a towel a t-shirt put it over your eyes of course, if you have like a dog or you have children screaming, it's really hard to do this. Maybe like a car alarm or something. But if nobody is like actually prodding you or moving you or stepping on you like kids or a dog or a cat, lie down and rest for five minutes, maybe even 10, okay? Just do it because it's really useful and it's really helpful. It's extremely beneficial. Anyways. Thank you for your practice. Namaste.